Nairobi, a city of vibrant culture and diversity, is facing a silent crisis that's threatening its essence, the plastic pollution. Every piece of plastic has a story, and these stories converge in landfills, silently narrating the environmental challenges that lie ahead. Pollution causes a lot of issues when it comes to the health of people and the health of the environment. Plastic, a once revolutionary material, has turned into a menace. Its convenience has come at a cost, a cost our planet bears every day, endangering our environment and choking our communities. Not only is human life at threat, but also marine life. It's clogging the, uh, clogging the, the drainage. Uh, we have plastic bags everywhere. Plastic pollution has disrupted the interconnected web of life by harming humans, animals and plants, threatening ecosystem, biodiversity and the sustainability of natural resources. In addition to the visible plastic waste, the proliferation of microplastics poses an equally grave threat to ecosystems and biodiversity. Another problem again is microplastics, because microplastics is a breakup of plastic bottles into smaller micro-sized you know, particles, which end up in our water, end up in our food, end up in our air. In fact, there was a research that was done that showed that microplastics were found in the breast milk of a mother. <laughs> Yes, it is that serious. Did you know that 95% of plastic packaging becomes burdensome waste, with 67% of ocean leakage coming from urban centers like Nairobi? Fighting plastic pollution has proven to be a big challenge in the country. In Kenya and other countries like Kenya, there is um, no infrastructure yet in place for waste management. It's currently in development. In the heart of this crisis, a group of dedicated individuals emerges as catalysts for change, the team behind Jijenge Industries. Jijenge Makers was started by Nzambi Mate in 2018. Uh, Jijenge has been founded by Nzambi Mate, who is an engineer and also a material scientist in a master's. Uh, we recycle plastics from post-industrial and post-consumer, whereby the post-industrial we collect the plastic from industries that manufacture plastics like Coca-Cola, and also from the post-industrial we collect the plastics from uh, the dump site, whereby everyone within Nairobi most, most so they dump their plastics all their waste. Inside this workshop, a transformation is taking place. Plastic waste is one of the best things is now being reborn into something new. Thank you, so valuable. Thank you so much, gender makers. Gender makers recycle plastic waste to make a baby brick. A baby brick is very strong. It's an alternative for building the pavement, like the concrete covers. So most of the time, here yeah, we have the machine to do the production. Uh, we also have the second facility whereby we crush the plastic at the even a crash machine. Then we have other machines that find out the end product. Thank you so much. In Dandora, we get a lot of garbage there. In that garbage, almost 70-65% of the garbage that get, reaches the lamp site is plastic. And plastic has become a major problem in, in the world, and especially in Nairobi. In Nairobi, the dumping of plastic is so, is so bad that we have to do something about it. And U.S. Jijenge came up with an initiative that you can add value into this plastic. Stay with us as we take you on a journey through this transformative process and witness how Jijenge is turning plastic into building bricks. The majority of plastic that we get in our production is called PP. This PP comprises of uh, some plastic that we get in the household level, uh, like the cups, plates, jug, we have basin.
plastic is put in a crusher where it's broken into small pieces. The small pieces of plastic are then mixed with sand, then fed in the extruder where the plastic and sand are heated until they become soft enough to mold. The mixture is added to hydraulic press where it cools and comes to shape. Gas Yes, gas, harmful gas emissions from most factories, including those involved in plastic production, pose a significant threat to the environment. These emissions contribute to air pollution, greenhouse gas accumulation, and climate change, aggravating the already dire environmental challenges we face. So, how does Dijenge handle these gases? We definitely find the gases because plastic has all those two gases, and then the carbon. So in the company, when the gas is emitted in the chambers, the chimneys now, it goes direct to an, a smoke extruder, which uh, extrudes the harmful gases to reduce the gases that is being emitted to the atmosphere. So by the time the gas is emitted to the atmosphere, it's already controlled. Jijenge Makers has been able to recycle over 200,000 kilograms of plastic garbage its main objective is to supply sustainable and cost-effective alternative building materials with the vision of installing these bricks in Nairobi streets, contributing to both environmental conservation and urban development. Uh, on the community, we have created so many jobs, more than 112 jobs since the company started. In a, in a week, we can recycle like four to six tons of plastic. So we are doing great. The construction industry, known for its significant resource use, is undergoing a profound transformation. Jijenga's bricks are demonstrating that we can embrace sustainability without hindering progress. It's very strong, whereby the product can stay on the ground for more than 40, 50 years without having any effect on the environment. They create accessible and affordable materials to build. But Jijenga is more than just a company. It's a community of change makers with passionate individuals behind the scenes shaping the transformation. I started working here from 2021 July. Being a recycling company, we've come up, we've managed to introduce a affordable bricks that are more are more durable and sustainable for the community um, across the country. Community members on the other hand are witnessing the tangible impact. Jijenge's bricks are more than construction materials. They are approved to responsible building practices. Jijenge makers are my tenants, so I decided to promote them by buying their products of which they call papers, you can see. The papers are very strong, of course, compared to the concrete one. They will stand, I wait, I can see this door is under the papers, of course. They are also waterproof. I'm a big client. Amid the crisis, a circular economy is emerging, a system where resources are used, reused and repurposed, minimizing waste and maximizing sustainability. And Jijenge is spearheading this. Kenya could potentially earn $3.4 billion by 2030 through circular economy practices. Circular economy helps us to reuse waste to generate value out of it. For example, uh, you walk out there and you see a body, a, a, a body of wastewater. What is usually the color of wastewater? I don't know. It's usually green in color, isn't it? If you see green water, you assume it's wastewater. 
So that green means there is value in that wastewater, you, which you can be able to remove and reuse. What is that value? It means you can make fertilizer out of that wastewater. So you can, you see, it gives you a different view of what is waste. And even as you remove the waste from wastewater, you generate cleaner water. So you are generating value, making fertilizer out of that wastewater, but you're also treating the water, and so the water can be reused. So you see you're generating two areas of value from something that was had no value at all. The variety of plastic pollution has not only led to pioneering of businesses like Jijenge, but the government has also enacted policies to combat this pressing environmental issue. We have developed uh, in Kenya the Sustainable Waste Management Bill, including circular uh, economy uh, principles and also the extended producer responsibility um, leg uh, legislation is being coming in place and that allows the producer responsibility organizations to take action and this uh, provides actually a framework to say the polluter pays and the polluter in this case is the person or the business that puts these materials on the market um, and it doesn't stop after the end consumer so businesses are responsible for all the plastics they put in the society to collect them and recover them. While the emergence of a circular economy presents promising solutions, it's important to acknowledge that it comes with its own set of challenges. We do see challenges for some businesses uh, to participate in the circular economy. In my opinion, they are, they are just actually two. Um, but uh, they're quite substantial. Um, one is you need to start from redesign. So there are big choices to make to really change. And secondly is that once you design differently, um, it needs to find commitment in the value chain and it needs to remain valid in the value chain. Um, we are not helped with uh, initiatives and innovations that are um, a small solution but there's no uptake in the value chain there's no commitment from other players because then those kind of solutions will never get the chance to grow and to become uh, the alternative for what we're looking for consumer perceptions because if i tell you if i'm selling a product to you and i'm telling you this product was once a waste what is your perception of course you wonder okay well, then why are you selling to me waste something that was once waste so those are some of the things that we need to probably get around. Despite these challenges, the benefits of embracing a circular economy far outweigh the obstacles. Circular economy can help us in the area of food, we can make compost out of waste, use it to grow food, create urban farms around in towns, in places, very urban areas, even in the rural areas, using circular economy principles. When you talk of water, some of these wastes can be used as water treatment, you know, materials. For example, I talked of rice husks. Uh, there are quite a number of other materials that you can use. Okay, if we talk about um, or the other one, energy, you can be able to generate biogas out of waste, isn't it? Uh, employment and entrepreneurship. If you can generate value out of something that has no value and even be able to export it, generate foreign exchange for the country, which, we, I mean, it's, it's something that is, we, we, we need at this point in time. This serves as a call to everyone to take part in this crucial endeavor, contributing to the collective effort to safeguard our planet for future generations. Um, a, a brand's uh, team up. We had a very nice challenge on this, on redesign your plastic packaging and your PET. Be clear, uh, when brand owners team up and civil society, NGOs with WWF um, and our initiative, we could really look at the technical, with the technical team at the technical aspects, and then with the marketing team and how are we going to get it across. And we might be benefiting from having a joint campaign on that because it's not a brand initiative that is solely just for that brand because they actually want to be compliant. They want to make a change in um, the Kenyan environment. 
Um, so I think there's also the strategy for businesses. Look at the issues and the challenges you're facing um, and see if we can team up as a sector, as a value chain, uh, and sometimes even cross-sectoral and looking at different value chains. And I think that can be really a win-win. Um, so there are the opportunities. To all of us in whatever we do, remember the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. So to any youth that's in this country, Kenya, uh, you have to have the focus, the vision of what you need to do. And lastly, don't forget to be committed As the sun sets over Nairobi, a city once burdened by plastic waste now shines with promise and potential. Jijenga's innovation has proven that the power to make a difference lies within each of us. Plastics to pillars. I am Firdaus Omar. <laughs>